college professor who worked at Caltech, the Thomas Jefferson University College of Law, and at a variety of local San Diego colleges. I now write and publish my mostly fictional titles as an independent, politically incorrect author. I believe it's, you know, it's the present climate of mistrust and hatred toward immigrants and the fear of women as independent and sexual beings. And uh, that kind of escalated after Mr. Trump was elected. And I also wanted to show this infected climate within a time and place that mirrors today's hatred and fear. Finally, my wife Ellen passed away in 2017 from Lewy body dementia. And her favorite genres of fiction were always mystery and historical. So I wanted to write this series in memory of her. Back in history, the militant Manchu in China made a profitable deal with the wealthy elite in the United States to provide cheap, uneducated labor to build the railroads and to develop California after the gold rush years of the 1850s. After the railroads were finished, however, these workers became expendable and hated. The Chinese, who wanted to become U.S. citizens, were a direct threat. And this was the link I wanted to explore in my mystery. My fictional Kuang family represents the beginnings of future Chinese assimilation. And they are hated and feared most of all because of this. Clara was a feminist before there was a feminist movement. She won the legal rights of California women to attend law school and to work at any job they were qualified to work at, despite not being able to attend law school herself because she had to work to support her five children. She was the first woman admitted to the California bar. She later established the idea for and the reality of the first California Public Defender's Office. The PDO today defends the indigent and outcasts of society, which is paid for completely by the government. Sadly, and perhaps ironically, her years of tireless work to help the poor and to establish female independence ended in her death in Los Angeles in 1934, without a penny to her name. I keep all the mysteries short, about 55,000 words, because Edgar Allan Poe said, you know, unless a reader can read something at one sitting, they chances are they, it won't emotionally affect them. So I keep it brief, uh, I keep the mysteries brief, and China Woman's Chance has been so popular that I've just completed an audio version, and it's read by an actual China woman, <laughs> and she's uh, a San Francisco native, Anne James, and she gives the story a realistic and culturally authentic flavor, I believe. It'll be for sale at Audible shortly. I've also written the second mystery, as I said, The Spiritualist Murders, and it focuses on the spiritualist movement in the United States at that time. And this movement gave women the right to speak about feminist concerns under the cloak of spirituality. In this instance, a male spiritualist or mesmerist, as they were called, takes advantage of the many sexually and emotionally abused wealthy women in order to make a profit. These women are being drugged and hypnotized to kill their husbands. And Clara Fultz and her law friend, Laura DeForce Gordon, must join together to solve the mystery of who this mysterious person is. And the climax takes place inside the famous Winchester House in San Jose in 1886. I don't want to brag, but I think I use the setting very well to end my 
So my third mystery is up and I've got an idea of what I want to do. I want to take uh, Clara to Southern China to solve a case since she has no firsthand experience with the Chinese except for her friend who lived in Chinatown, Ah Toy. And so I want my readers to experience the 1880 Manchu uh, dynasty, um, you know, and plus the mystery, of course. <laughs>